14 says this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for the sentiments that are in your word. And they're words that we live by. And we can't live without them. It's not really living. And we thank you, Lord, for this day that we celebrate the birth of this nation. But this nation is now sick and is drifting away from you, Lord. And we just ask for the hand of God to turn this nation back to our God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Those words were spoken by Solomon. At, at, it, they were spoken to Solomon by God at night after he dedicated the temple. Solomon built the first temple in Jerusalem. David, his father, had in mind to build the temple, and he had accumulated the material, 1 Chronicles cha uh, chapter 29, verse 2 to 5, David says, With all my resources I have provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. All of these in large quantities, besides in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. 3,000 talents of gold, gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the buildings, for the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? He ended that with a question. The question, who? Who is willing, he said. And he said, now who is willing? Now, who is willing? We're living in a time when people are consecrated to themselves, not to God, to themselves and their own interests and their own concerns. This country is approaching 65 million abortions. As of Friday, there are 64,891,205. This country is on the wrong side of God. Amen. Amen. The wrong side of God. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are, the li are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It seems at least on the face, on the surface, the country started out on the right side of God. But it didn't stay that way. This country... You know the, the, what they call the politics of inclusion? They talk about inclusion, and what they, when they talk about diversity, they're not speaking about racial diversity and racial inclusion and ethnic diversity. We already have that. That has emerged, that, is, that, is, uh, that has been conquered. Racism is a sin. We can all agree on that. It's a sin. What they're talking about isn't racism when they talk about inclusion. They're talking about perversion. They're talking about including perversion. The alphabet movement is on the wrong side of God. I didn't even have to push the button. Two X chromosomes, you're a woman. 
an X and a Y, you're a man, period. And there were two babies born. I think that was in Altoona Hospital. And uh, one of them was a girl, one was a boy. And in a quiet moment, the little girl goes Psst, to the little boy. He says, what are you, I'm trying to get some sleep over here. And she says, are you a boy baby or a girl baby? He said, I'm a boy baby. And she says, how do you know you're a boy baby? And he said, well, if you ask me again later on when there's nobody around, maybe tonight, I'll show you. So later on that night, nobody's around. She goes, Psst. she wakes him up again. I'm trying to get some sleep over here. You told me you'd show me how you know that you're a baby boy. He says, all right, watch this. Swings his legs over the side of that crib thing. He says, you see this? I got the blue booties. <laughs> That's how I know for sure that I'm a baby boy. Got the blue booties. Booties don't have anything to do with it. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what chromosomes you have. If you want to mutilate yourself when you're an adult, who's stopping you? But I don't think we should have to pay for it. But they're trying to expose this gender bender business to our children in school. They're suggesting that the children examine themselves to see if they really are, by their feelings, what they are by their anatomy. We've never had this before. They're being challenged to examine their feelings to see if they're really a boy or a girl. That is perversion. Drag shows in elementary schools. That's creepy perversion. State of New Jersey is suing three of their school districts because those, in dis those districts ins insist that parents be notified when their children are transitioning. So the state of New Jersey is suing them because they want to notify parents. This country is on the wrong side of God. Amen. Gay marriage, 1 Corinthians 6, 8 to 11. Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers and sisters. Or do you know, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Wrong side. It's not hard to get on the right side, but a nation isn't going to do that. A person is going to do that. Romans chapter 1, 26 to 32. Because of this, God gave them over to his shameful lusts. Even their women engaged in natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. 
They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. The approval is as damning as the sin itself. Shame! This country is on the wrong side of God. The powers that be, the people in charge, those who have the approval of enough voters to get elected, they call wrong right and right wrong. It's upside down, morality's upside down. Right and wrong are determined by God himself, not by those in high places who approve of perversion. This nation is on the wrong side of God. I don't know if this nation was ever a Christian nation. An individual is a Christian. It was founded on Jodeo Christian principles. I think we can be sure of that. Slavery is not a Christian principle. There are a lot of instances of slavery in the Bible. People in the Bible even sold themselves into slavery. But this country fought a bloody war to end slavery. My great-grandfather was in that war. And he was captured. And he spent the rest of the war. They were, that unit was on their way. Pennsylvania 62nd was on their way to Gettysburg. And um, they were defeated in that battle. They retreated. And he was captured and spent the rest of that time in the Andersonville prison, the famous Andersonville prison, which was like a German concentration camp. People starved to death, disease. It was horrible. And he was in there. We never knew that until my son did the research and found out about that. Marxism is not a Judeo-Christian principle. Anyone in high office that embraces socialism or embracing Marxism, Marxism hates God. Marxism hates the nuclear family. They want to destroy the nuclear family. Marxism hates private property. Marxism claims your children as theirs like President Biden did the other day. They're all of our children, he said. There were some rainbow people I saw in the news this week chanting, we're here, we're queer, and we're coming for your children. Did you see that on the news? So how can they do that? How can they come for your children? Through the schools. The president made a statement that the children belong to all of us. All of this stuff, alphabet stuff, I can even say that uh, other word, but it's a four letter word that begins with a W and rhymes with joke. I can't bring myself to say that. I, just, I hate that word, I can't say it. That W word represents all that's wrong with this country. Drifting away from God. But it's on a collision course with God. Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> with all of its faults, this is still the greatest nation on earth. It's the greatest because God allowed it to be. If it wasn't for this nation, we'd all be speaking German. 
some great things about America. In 1801, James Finley invented the modern suspension bridge. 1853, George Crum invented potato chips. What would we do without potato chips? <laughs> 1856, Gail Borden invented condensed milk. Remember, they didn't have refrigeration. Condensed milk, and you just open the can and add water to it. 1879, Thomas Edison invented the electric light bulb. It lights up the world. 1885, George Eastman invented the photographic film. 1887, Emil Berliner invented the disc record, the record. I didn't think it was that long ago, but, but apparently. In 1887, Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. 1861, R Richard Gatling invented the machine gun. You know, the Gatling gun with all the barrels? 1861. 1885, William LeBaron and Jenny invented the skyscraper. These are all things that came out of this country and blessed the world. Well, some of the, maybe potato chips didn't bless the world. <laughs> maybe the Gatling gun didn't, but. 1897, William Morrison and John Wharton invented cotton candy. 1894, William C. Hooker invented the mouse trap. This stuff all came out of this country. 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright invented the airplane. 1905, Frank Epperson and Epperson invented the ice pop. 1912, Lester Wire invented the traffic light. Interesting, his name was Wire. <laughs> his name, he invented the traffic light in this country. 1926, Robert Goddard invented the liquid fuel rocket. 1929, Sam Foster created sunglasses. Also in 1929, Clarence Birdseye created frozen food. 1930, Ruth Wakefield made chocolate chip cookies. What would we do without chocolate chip cookies? This country. 1937, Edwin Land created polarized sunglasses. George Stiblitz in 37 invented the modern day digital computer. Way back in 37, wasn't the personal computer. 1938, Wallace Crothers invented nylon. 39, General Motors invented the fully automatic transmission for automobiles. It was, they were introduced in Oldsmobile and Cadillac. 45, Perry Spencer created the microwave. Did you know it was created that long ago? 1945, in this country, not somewhere else. Robert Oppenheimer invented the nuclear bomb in 45, in this country. 1950, Frank McNamara and Ralph Schneider created the credit card. Uh, maybe that's not such a good thing. <laughs> Been there, done that. Don't get buried in credit cards. It's too hard to climb out of that. We, we, I mean, we got out of it years ago. Never again. Forget, forget about it. 1950, Marion Donovan invented the disposable diaper. 1956, here's an important one. Edward G. Rice invented pantyhose. <laughs> what would we do without pantyhose? That was in 56. I can remember when, I, when we got married, and my wife had those uh, hose. No, weren't pants. She, they had snappers, little snapper things on them to hold them up. Yeah, we didn't have, we didn't have pantyhose, but in 56, this guy invented pantyhose. 
1965, Jack Russell invented the compact disc. How could a dog do that? <laughs> that was a pretty smart dog, wasn't it? Jack Russell. Stephanie Kowalik invented, the, invented Kevlar. Skip a couple of these here. Seventy-one. John Blankenbaker invented the personal computer. In seventy-one, Ray Tomlinson sent the first email. I guess that was enough. But God bless this country. And he blessed the world through this country. The world would be without potato chips, chocolate chip cookies, and pantyhose. <laughs> would probably survive okay without those things, but... But this country, great as it is and greater as it was, is walking away from God. Amen. Amen. There's a new racism, teaching children that they are oppressors if they're white. That's a new racism. That's part of the alphabet people, I call it CR it's CRT. The trouble is that the critical race theory people and the rest of the alphabet people, the W word people, the trouble is they think they are right. They're convinced they're right. And their right is based on what they think or what they feel it ought to be. They think what they want reality to be. But right or wrong are dependent on what God says it is. In other words, if I don't agree with God, I'm already wrong. So what does God's word say about all this stuff? Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. You can be as convinced as convinced as can be that your point of view and your feelings are right. It leads to death if it's not God. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you think you can get to heaven any other way, you're already wrong. Proverbs 12, 15 and 16. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. And that's what's going on today. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Only a few. Churches are getting emptier and emptier. What did I see? 36 people in the country, um, what did I see? They go to church or they, or they claim to be Christian. And it used to be in my own lifetime that people, if they, if they moved somewhere, one of the things they needed to do was find a church. And now, they don't need that. They're on the wrong side of God. Certain churches are drifting into alphabet. They're on the wrong side of God, on the wrong side. We've had three visitors here that were Methodist ministers. They didn't want that generally known, but they were, if they were shopping around looking, and they were Methodist ministers. And the ministers are jumping ship off the Methodist church because of what that church is embracing. Our 
Our only hope is in Jesus and Him crucified. There may not be hope for this world. God has a plan. We're on the right side of God. But there will be an end to his patience. I don't think this entire nation will ever come to Christ. That would be nice. It would be wonderful. But Satan is the God of this world. And holiness will always be there. God ran out of patience in the time of Noah. So he raised up a righteous man. The holiness was there in the midst of all that violence. God ran out of patience in the time of Noah. I already said that, didn't I? God ran out of patience in the time of Abraham. Sodom was destroyed for doing the very things that are going on right now with government approval. Send those men out to us. The ten northern kingdom of Israel taken into captivity by the, Ass by the Assyrians uh, because they wouldn't stop murdering their babies in sacrifice to Baal. And adjacent to Baal worship places were Asherah shrines. They were celebrated, they celebrated perversion as worship. That's what they were doing. After a time, the two southern kingdoms, Judea and Benjamin, started doing the same thing. And they knew what happened. God ran out of patience. Nebuchadnezzar took Judea into captivity. We love this nation. We love this land. This is our home. We don't like to see the perversion that's happening here because it offends our God. We love the mountains. We love the lakes and the streams. We're learning how to take care of it. Why are so many people desperate to come here? Because it's the best. And it's the best because God blessed it. We live in a beautiful land, a beautiful nation. But the nation is sick. The nation is sick. It's ill. God is the source of our well-being. But we're drifting away from God as a nation. Christian believers aren't, but the, sh but the churches are shrinking, so... All, I mean, all kinds of churches. So can those people who never went back really be Christians? It's not for me to judge. There's an assault on our children. And the alphabet perversion, the gay agenda, abortion. Symptoms of the sickness of this nation. The sickness of sin is the worst sickness because it has eternal consequences. So what do we do when someone's having symptoms? What do we do? What do we do with that lady in, in the antique store? We pray. <laughs> if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This nation needs a healing. Yes. Needs to be on the right side of God. Yes. We are people who are charged to pray. Yes. So I'm challenging you right now to come on down here and find a place to pray and spend a little time praying for this nation that we get back on the right side of God. Would you do that? But everybody stand and come on down, find a place to pray, and spend some time just in prayer for this nation.